Yes, my darling. Yes, I used to be little just like you. Yes, I played with all the other kids too. I was born in Elmira, so I've known Dina since the 50s. Dina's a very interesting person. Uh, Dina Jacobson, yeah, Dina, oh man, she's great. 90 years old now, um, spunkiest person you'll meet. She's an enigma. She said that after the Holocaust, she doesn't believe in God. She, she doesn't believe in God. She certainly has plenty of reason to hate people, but she just sort of portrays this kindness to people. And I, I wonder if that's maybe something that's just inborn in her, and maybe, maybe that's why she was one of the survivors. What would I do in that situation? How would I act? To be next in line for that gas chamber? I, I don't know what I would do. We don't know how she gets through every day. Religion means a great deal to her. But she has a problem with God. And um, God knows. That's understandable. Maybe the reason she lived was to share her story with the world. Yes, my darling, yes, I used to be little like you. Most people have some story. We all have something that's an experience that has helped shape us. other lady has her arm around him. I remember many nights that my parents had nightmares, so... Screaming, screaming waking up screaming. Screaming nightmares, so as a child, that was my normal. Nighttime in the woods. The nighttime, I can go through everything but in Auschwitz. I saw this every half hour, the trains came in, and I saw the people going into the gas chamber, and I wanted to go too. I didn't want to live that, that way. I had a baby to take care of. Yeah, we just spent the whole day together, getting to know each other, and I'm hearing them, Connie and Dina, reminisce about their lives. I couldn't talk to English. Everybody talked Yiddish. And I learned from my daughter. She was uh, five years old. She went to kindergarten. So she was yeah. actually learning and teaching you? Yeah. At the, yes. yes. Yeah. And I asked Dina a lot of questions about being from Poland, being in Auschwitz. You know, she pulls up her sleeve and she shows me her tattoo on her arm. It was not easy. Right. Before she came, it was almost like we were just seeing pictures in a book. Before it was just something you read about. But Dina was there. She was, a, you know, it wasn't history. It was happening now. She really made you feel as though you were isolated. And what happened? What would you do if you were put through this situation? Kids always ask to see her tattoo, to see that blue tattoo, and to have kids reach out, hold her arm, and look down and ask questions about when that was done or how that was done. And it was heartbreaking. Three years later, that's the moment I remember from that whole experience because it showed you take a human and just give them a number instead of using their name. They can't live normally anymore and they're referred to as a number. It just broke my heart. And yes, you're right, my dear, yes. That's a tattoo on my arm. When Dina was there, sitting in front of me, telling me her story, it took m me to a whole different perspective. 
she survived while millions and millions died. And she's here to tell her story so that we can pass it on to the future. Honestly, I couldn't even get to like a quarter of how brave she was in that situation. She's stronger than everyone, anyone I've known in my, in my life. When I went up to um, talk one-on-one -on -one with her at the end, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you tell someone that they have made such an impact on your life just through the terrible experiences right. yeah, that they've yeah, gone yeah. through? I felt that couldn't figure out no. what to say, so I was just like looking at at her for a couple seconds and finally the only thing I said was you're beautiful like I, I had no idea what to say to her and she was like oh thank you and she gave me a hug and I was just like I wish I could say something better than that.